Hi. Time to connect the server and the client. We'll use CORD, which is a core async flavored WebSocket library. And core async, of course. So here's the client code from episode two. This game data structure is what we'll get from the server. But first, a bit of cleanup. I'd like to separate out all this quiescent DOM related code. And that includes this quiescent render. So all this into components, ELGS. Let's also pull this out as a constant. Yeah, still works. Okay, remove some craft. We'll need a WebSocket endpoint. You will use chords uh, with channel to get a core async like WebSocket channel. So put on the channel a new game. Looks fine. If you thought the requires looked a bit too magical there, I added a little plugin to my Emacs that does the core async referrals for me. Okay, let's connect the client. Won't need this. We'll use the cord client WebSocket channel function to connect. Mm. <laughs> no, I can't remember the incantation. Yeah, here it is. Our server is on 9009. I'm gonna have to make this smarter eventually. If things don't work out, let's just throw. So, read the game from the server. Cord wraps our message in a map though. Okay. Hey, there's our grid. And see, here's the WebSocket message. It contains a full spoiler of all the faces though. A game development mantra is uh, never trust the client, and for good reason. Later we'll have to prep the game before sending it to the client, uh, removing those faces. But now, let's reveal a tile. The server should listen for tile indexes on the WebSocket channel. Let's create a loop binding the game to it. So when we get a tile index, message again, then recur with the tile revealed. Looks good. Same for the client. It should loop listening for updated games from the server. When let in case the channel closes. And recur. Yeah, uh, one digression. We're using FigWheel for hot reloading. Yeah, we don't want to connect a new WebSocket and start a new loop for every reload. And Def1 takes care of that. And it still works. Okay, the server is ready to receive tile indexes. Next up, sending it from the client. We'll need onclick handlers on the cells. So uh, pass the channel all the way down.
So on click, prevent default, and put the index, and yeah, <laughs> we don't know the index. We could figure it out, I guess. But it makes more sense if the server kept track of a tile ID. Another thing for our prep function, I think. Oh. Okay, let's just do that. But first, let's see if it works. Index 0 all the way. Not bad. So, prep. I create the game, prep it, and the tile face frequencies should all be nil. Hmm, no prep. Update tiles, hide faces. Okay, but we want to keep revealed faces. And the same goes for matched faces. and two. Yeah, nice. Let's add the IDs. Create game, prep, tiles, map ID, and I expect the 0 to 15. Range, 0 to 16 exclusive. Associ IDs. So uh, map indexed. Associ ID. Okay. So prep before sending to the client, and we can use the ID. Let's reset and see. Hmm. Hmm. Oh. Yeah. Name doesn't nil pun for some reason. Okay, let's try this. Cool. But yeah. They don't flip back. <laughs> That's up next.